This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome everyone. Hope everybody's doing well as we get into phase three of uh, of opening here. <laughs> um, the uh, so we'll have a call to order at seven thirty one. The uh, approval of minutes of the regular meeting on September eighth, two twenty twenty. Can I get a motion to accept? I'll make a motion. Um, and a second. I need to make a change. All right. Well, yeah, we second then make changes, right? Okay. We're going to do All right. So I'll can make we get second. All right. All right. Any any additions, subtractions, deletions? Angela. Uh okay. Um the information about what I was doing with Yukon, it's not agriculture. It's through the conservation training program. Okay. That's the only change. All right. Any other, anything else? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, opposed? Abstain? Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So let's um we've got some issue uh things uh, it's it's um Eileen, should we do this now? Should we vote on the the, the um the dates? It's it's really not on the on there now. Right? It's under new business. It's under new business. It's, Okay, I'm sorry. Can't see. Oh, there we go. I can I can make it bigger. That helps my glasses. All right, so we'll wait till then. All right. So uh, Kelly, do you want to go with your report? Sure. Um, not not too many updates, but also I'm going to fly through this pretty quickly. Um, some of these I'm leaving on there because they will become active in the future, um, like Tree City USA. Uh, we're going to have to wait until the spring to make the declaration for Arbor Day, and then we, that'll be the last piece to our puzzle for applying to become a tree city. Um, conservation easements, still working on that with MetroCog. I think they're tied up with some other projects right now, and things are kind of lagging behind on, on that GIS viewer. Uh, regional trails application, uh, that's still ongoing with MetroCog as well. Um, I haven't heard any updates from them. But um, hopeful that that should be rolling out in the next few months or so. Um, open space grant update. Um, we have Joe Gusko on the line as well. He's been working tirelessly for um, us to obtain some of the parcels off of Beaver Dam Road uh, that were part of our 2017 grant application for the Oswa grant. Um, right now, our conversations are continuing. Um, in a positive way, we think. And DEEP is considering somewhat splitting the 2017 grant funds that we received so that we can move forward on the acquisition of those Beaver Dam parcels, um, but while still holding on to the potential for us to obtain those off of James Farm Road um, and Peters Lane. So um, not too much to report there. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting with Connecticut DEP and seeing if, if they could help us. Um, we also have some allies with uh, Amy Patterson from the Connecticut Land Conservation Council. And she said that she has experience in doing this and she is uh, willing to advocate for us to split this grant. So uh, that would be a great success for us to show for the next round of, of funding, which has, uh, Joe has also mentioned that that will become available or be announced rather uh, early 2021. Um, so we want to start getting our ducks in a row for some potential parcels that we might want to apply for. So we're ready to rock and roll when that's announced. Um, uh, did Joe, do you have anything to add to that? Do you want anything to add to that? He's yeah. on mute. I don't think he realizes. Oh. Here I am. There you go, Joe. Um, yeah. that, that was pretty much uh, what the situation is. Um, I'm hoping to get back to uh, Amy. Tomorrow, she was going to speak with the individual at uh, Deep, who uh, basically it wasn't a no uh, when, when the ask was was uh, reiterated again at our at our quarterly um, meeting um, last week. So I'm thinking that uh, the the prospects of some sort of arrangement uh, are 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 good. Uh, whether that means the town um, fronts the money picks up the parcel, wraps it into Roosevelt, and then the, when the grant is awarded, then the town is reimbursed. That's a scenario. Um, 
So I will I will keep plugging along and um, we'll let you know hopefully uh, when we get some success on this because the uh, the the uh, property owner is very uh, motivated uh, to to sell and a little bit getting a little discouraged. So uh, we'd like to try to at least show her that we're we're um, trying to get creative. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. All right. All right, moving on, Unified Water Study. Uh, we actually, let, just last week, um, had the release of the Long Island Sound report card for 2020. And this is the first year that all of the data that we've been collecting from the Unified Water Study has been incorporated into that report card. So it's really exciting um, that, the, that we're finally using some of the, the data from our, all of these embayments that we've been sampling now for four years. Um, there was a press release, I believe I saw Joe Gresco was there. Um, uh, my intern Nate and I popped in really quick and then had to get back out, so we, we didn't have time to say hi. Um, but we had, there was a press release down in New Haven um, for that uh, report card release as well. Um, Bruce uh, Pop, I, I'm yeah. sorry, and I just want to mention I, I did add that if anybody hadn't seen it, it's, it's on our uh, Facebook page. I did Excellent. put on the report card on the Facebook page. Thank you. And they did also launch, there's a lot of uh, interactive. Um, items i guess on their website where you can look at the embayment nearest you and and they actually put down some action items so that you can see where you live and say hey what why did my area receive a c or what have you um and how you can actual action items that you can take to fix that um and we did get a b plus i believe if i recall correctly mm -hmm. our our kicker was turbidity for uh outer housatonic that kind of drove us down otherwise we'd have an a <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Brewster Pond and Longbrook Pond. Things are still progressing with that study. We have Northeast Aquatic that's studying Brewster Pond and coincidentally um, Longbrook Pond, being that it's directly a down gradient. Um, they, some of the preliminary findings were a general, they, they did a whole day of field work out there and they did find that there was a general lack of education um, as to how um, ponds, lakes, water courses, wetlands, how all of them function. They, just based on the questions and the complaints they received while they're on the field, they were a little concerned. So that just means there's a good opportunity for some uh, watershed education. So we'll be working, I'm still waiting on a lot of the results from their sampling and analysis, but uh, we already are started to, we've started to work with the Longbrook Park Commission in Northeast Aquatic on doing an educational mailer, similar to what we did with Bruce Brook abutters, but this is going to be more generalized watershed um, education, really um, simple things like, hey, if you put too much fertilizer in your, on your lawn, it's gonna, it's gonna run off into the water course, et right. cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're working with Northeast Aquatic on that, my intern's working on that, and then we're going to, we're really just gonna delineate the whole watershed and do a, a quick little mailer. And that's all that's been at the urging of uh, Councilwoman Caitlin Shake, who's really spearheading a lot of what's going on in that uh, district as it pertains to Brewster and Longbrook Pond. Um, so once I have that report, which I'm hope hopeful in the next couple of weeks, I'll forward it all on to you folks as well. Uh, should have some interesting information in it. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, lastly, oh, go ahead. Yep. Has the water quality uh, in either in Brewster or Longbrook, upper or lower, um, been quantified in terms of the content of pollutants and concentration? It has not. We have not gotten that far yet. Um, I want to make sure that when we sample, we are sampling for I don't know. But in in my pat in my past lives, if you sample for it and then you find it, and then what? So I want to make sure that we're going about this in a phased approach um before we start the sampling for everything um so a lot of what they've been looking at are more nutrient loads and the, as you as you guys are aware the inputs to booster are primarily stormwater so it's going to be an uphill battle but there will be some things we can do to kind of mitigate some of those inputs but short short answer have not done any actual chemical analysis on the water or the sediment uh, Councilwoman Shake has requested it, but she didn't didn't uh, have any specifics of what she was looking for. So I do want to I just want to make sure that we do this in a phased approach that makes sense uh, for 
what we're what we're aiming to do, which is improve water quality in general. Yeah, she's going to have to be guided a little bit because she does not really have any she you know background on that at all. Yeah, 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 which is fair. Um, and and that's fair. that's another opportunity for education. So she'll be uh, along with the bunch in the watershed there. So, um. Long story short, though, no chemical sampling has been done. Is that something that you would like to um, advocate for I, sooner rather than later? There's chemical problems in, in Longbrook Pond. I mean, that goes back decades. I know, but I know. I, in terms of nutrient loading, I, th I think it might be a, an impact on people in terms of uh, fertilizing their lawns if we said, the nitrogen levels of Longbrook Park are X number times above normal. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's five times what it should be. It's 10 times what it should be. And use that as a, as a thing to demonstrate to people that there is a significant problem and you can bring that number down. I, I do like that. Doesn't really help, but it, if we say that you know the the nitrogen levels are extremely high, and you can do something to take care of that. Karen, in doing that, um, can we also on our website or Facebook page identify what street areas? feed into the pond because that's very important as well because people will say oh well that I live far away so that doesn't affect me and that's mm -hmm. not necessarily true so if they have a general idea of um, where their runoff feeds to they might have a better idea and how to mitigate it that's a good point well, that's something we can depict on in that we're, we're doing this as a targeted mailing at first, and we could certainly throw it up on our webpage because it's going to be applicable to most areas in the world. Um, mm -hmm. But that is a good idea just to highlight uh, what is a watershed and, and where you fit in that those watershed boundaries and what that means. Um, so that is a good idea. Thank you. The other side of that, and, and I don't mean that that's a great idea, but if you don't say that, the people who are over fertilizing their other areas realize what's happening and they're not exactly sure if it's going into Longbrook or going if it's going somewhere else it's just as bad it is exactly you're, everywhere you are you're in a watershed it's just which one yeah so this could be a, this could be we start we start there and then make this a a, a town-wide issue again we've done this with the uh, Paquanic River Initiative mm -hmm. that's uh, for the Paquanic River uh, through the the towns that all the butted to the river and told them about the the, the load of the pesticides and don't throw your your clippings into the water and try not to dump your leaves in the water. And so I think this could be a, a educational piece that could be given to everybody at one point. Agreed. What one comment that I had from uh, Hillary who was out there collecting data was that she had several people complain to her about the aquatic vegetation and how ugly it was. And she uh, was all, she was just taken aback. She's like, she did, that people don't realize that they they do provide some actual value uh, to yeah. improve water quality. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, so. that uh, Joe and I Joe and I have some experience with that right now, right, Joe? We won't talk about it. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, all right. And then lastly. Um, not too much update on the Inland Wetlands membership, other than we did have a long-standing member. I don't even know if Bill knows this yet. Um, Ron Hoydick has resigned. Uh, he said that he had over 20 or 30 years of commitment to the commission, and it was time for him to move on. So we do have an opening, and I believe, Angela, I think you had perhaps submitted an application. Um, but I don't have an update on where that stands. I, that's the last I heard. No, he hasn't been in a couple meetings. I was worried that that was going to happen. Yeah, I think he 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 just he was happy to stay on if if we really needed him, but he uh, just wants to um, live his life and not have to, I guess, worry about attending in the wetlands meetings. <laughs> I remind him what the ordinance says: you're on it until you're taken off of it. <laughs> yeah. right, it's like the mop. Okay. <laughs> All right, and that's all I have. All right, um, an old business. Uh, any other any other questions for Kelly from anybody? 
-hmm. Okay. Uh, old. Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. I, I'll bring it up in 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 new business. All right. We've got a couple things to add to new business when we get down to there. Um, so let's uh, on old business uh, piping pullovers again. I I've been trying to get the I'll get the next last report that was last Friday to everybody. I'll email it. To, I, I'm, are you getting those emails? I'll just send those emails from the from the um, from Corey over there on, at Audubon to, on the play. The season's basically over. There's not much to report on there at all. Uh, open space. Uh, I don't believe that we kind of covered a little bit in the grant update. Is there anything else on open space inventory at this point? Hearing I'd like nothing. To make a comment. Yep. I could. Driving through the town, I've been driving more than trying to stay in the house. I've been noticing that a number of the areas that we had identified and that are town owned access ways to the Housatonic River um, no longer identified. In fact, some of them appear to have been taken over by the adjoining properties. Hmm. Now, those have always been kind of important little ways for people to get access in the neighborhoods in particular. Housatonic oh. Avenue has one. The one that I noticed the other day that doesn't, I, you can't even identify it anymore, is the one that's near Pexno Pond. But there's, I believe there's four or five at least go up and down the river. Um, Kelly, is there any way of make those more identifiable or see if the town engineer can give you a, a list of where they are and what they are? Yeah, I, I probably in the past two months, I've been to the Pexmo Pond access area and it is tucked in there. You have to know about it. Otherwise, you don't, you can't find it. Um, well, you can a sign, believe it or not, but I believe that the neighbor <laughs> Yeah, I, I, we have uh, encroachment issues all all over, across the board in town. <laughs> so it's unfortunate. I've been trying to tackle them one by one as I find them, um, but many folks are very unwilling to give up their encroachment without a yeah. battle, I found. so. Um, but I do agree that waterfront access is very important, especially along the Housatonic, where I feel like it's pretty, uh, there aren't a lot of public access points in general. so. That's something that I think that, that we can work on, at least improving signage. I know that the neighboring property owners will not be pleased because more folks might be using the properties, but that's kind of what we want. So, but, but waterfront access, we 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 we're a block. Have to do that. I think that's that is a rule, isn't it? We have to show that that there is public access to these waterfront areas. Isn't that? Um, we use people to put in canoes and kayaks in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What a years was one of the major spots where the duck hunters used to launch their boats but um, the other ones were always kayaks and canoes it was uh, it was used fairly heavily um, yeah I'm not, I don't know Kelly if there's any way of, is there a list anywhere of what these access points are or, but are there, I'm sure there is there, is there a database of them at all well, we have, I mean, we have um, the, just our GIS, and I can sort by town on properties and then just look along the river. It won't take that long well, to identify if, them. If, you know, something, if you had something like that that could be emailed out to us, you know, and if anybody's going along those areas, we could do a little reconnoitering for you and then okay. report back. Instead of you having to drive all over the place. Bill's driving all over the place already, so we'll just let him. <laughs> we'll give him a little those to you Kelly what's that I'm sure the town engineer mr. Casey can supply that to you fairly easily perhaps I will certainly reach out to him as well okay cool okay all right Good point um, yeah before you let's get on to the next uh, uh, anything else on old business yeah uh, if, if I may yes mr. Joseph. Chair. Um, Kelly, did you ever get contacted by U.S. Solar? I gave them your call. All right, I will try to uh, so. re reiterate uh, them to contact. This is the project that's going to go in on the Shelton landfill. And, I remember you talking about this. And they uh, uh, are looking to uh, have municipal benefits 
uh, to the uh, adjacent uh, to cities and towns. So um, I think basically um, if uh, uh, legal looks over whatever contract they're they're proposing, I think it's a 20 year contract, um, it would help uh, the town with its you know power bill, uh, municipal power bill um, over the life of the loan. Um, I had I think uh, they 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 uh, estimated somewhere in the area of about 120 grand over 20 years for the town, but hey, it's 120 grand. So uh, I will um, have them try to contact you again um, to that. And then um, lastly, uh, uh, as you mentioned, the upcoming 2021 open space uh, parcel. If, if the Conservation Commission can update their wish list um, as to which are the priority properties, um, I was hoping we can maybe uh, apply for two or three um, um, sitting on that board, you know, gives me an advantage to uh, advocate for uh, selection. So uh, I just don't want to randomly shoot for something. I'd rather have uh, you guys make a decision and then and then we can go from there. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joseph. Okay. Uh, uh, if we can yeah, look at that, then um, we do have the plan someplace. Maybe I can find it. We can shoot out there. Everybody and take a look at uh, Karen. Um, Joe, is it possible that that the um, U.S. solar would ever consider the Stratford landfill as a solar farm? What's wrong with Stratford's landfill? <laughs> <laughs> this was a uh, um, uh, just a pilot program, and I believe three or maybe four sites across the state were chosen uh, as okay. the, the first sort of shared solar um, um, toe in the water, for lack of a better term. So um, if it works out well, and I, I know that we will be addressing expanding that shared solar program again during um, next session, if I'm lucky enough to be there, uh, then uh, hopefully if Stratford's interested, then we can go from there. I mean, well, the reason I, I ask that is there's several people that live in town that work in Wallingford and Wallingford has its own electrical supply yeah. house so to speak. and so it's it's beneficial to live there because your you, your electric bill is very very low and so i just thought well maybe this might be an opportunity for stratford to get in on the ground floor so i mean if you could encourage them to um, think of us consider that, that would be wonderful absolutely if, if i could also add to that uh, part of the reason why our landfill is uh is where it is right now is as um epa is just starting to plan what uh, what the remedy will be for the landfill it is part of the Raymark superfund site uh so i think we're i don't i don't want to speculate five, five ten years out before we're going to see the end of that um they just did the survey of the landfill i want to say two months ago um so they're really just beginning uh planning uh, of what they're going to do how they'll remediate it so but i do think it could be a good idea um and i know there are some solar panels that are airport friendly i don't know if being right in the in the path of the runway it will work but i do think that's a good idea to at least explore yep this property there uh i'll just bring you something else on old business again we had last uh, last meeting we talked a little bit about the uh the the poll uh, going up um, the uh, communications tower that was going to go up down by mm -hmm. flood uh, I, I don't know Kelly if you heard anything about what that they, there was a few people that were against it again during the uh, comments at the last city council meet, town council meeting uh, but I just want to let people know that yeah that, that one person said that the height of the tower was against ordinances and they were looking into that it was the only only thing that I heard that was, uh, again, some issues with there. I have not heard anything since our meeting myself. Yeah. Okay. All righty. All right. Believe, go, go, Joseph. All right. I believe it's on the town council agenda tonight. Oh, it is. Okay. Is it Laura? What is? <laughs> Laura's right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm downstairs. She's downstairs at the other at the other, at uh, the other meeting. meeting. What's on the uh, the, t the tower? It, uh, it's it's tabled, and we're going to keep it tabled. Okay, tabled. All right, there you go. Yeah. Heard it from the honorable <laughs> Ms. Dancho. 
All right, shut that in the door, maybe because you guys are too damn loud. All right. We're, okay. Um, all right. So, uh, anything else in an old business? All right. Uh, on our agenda, on number five is next regular meeting is the twentieth um, of tenth. So that's what we're going to be having for the next meeting. And then the new bit one I am a news business. Let's get this out of the way first. Uh, is the meeting schedule? Everybody got a chance to take a look at it. Uh, we we do have to vote on that, so we can put that into the record. Just out of so, curiosity, uh, are any of I'm those college? Excuse me. Go ahead, Bill. What? No, I mean, we always have a stumbling block every now and then. We don't realize one of those is a holiday. Is any does anybody know if any of those are holidays? I did a real cursory look, and I didn't see any. You know, but um, it's it's if our meetings are on on a Tuesday it's rare that they become uh, an issue on holidays, but it could be, uh, I, I actually did not look. Okay. I did. Yeah, okay. I did look. All right, any, anything you saw? Okay. We were good, Eileen? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so can I get a motion to accept the next so uh, 2021 meeting schedule? So moved. Second. Okay, any more dis any discussion? All right, just the note, only, dis the time change. The only discussion time would be the time change, right? Thank you, Karen. Just can we, you know, again, just update that on the time change? So everybody, again, is everybody aware of that, right? Okay, all right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Abstain? Okay, thank you. All right, new business. We, we a couple things uh, that we were sent uh, from uh, the, uh, the city hall was the airport master plan update uh, that was sent out uh, from Eileen sent that out to everyone. It was only 220, 209 pages, 229 pages, something. Kelly read the whole thing this afternoon, so she's going to talk all about it now. Uh, <laughs> It, it again we were asked uh, as part of uh, the commissions in the town to weigh in on this um, and so this gives the opportunity to weigh in on this a little bit uh, I'm not sure we have the, all the time right now to, to make a cognizant uh, decision or anything of that na nature but um, just I went through it and and really I went to the environmental overview, which really is the is more pertinent for us. And as everybody knows, that's a very 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 delicate area over there. That has got a lot of endangered species. It's got a lot of uh, the marshland, the the waterways. The it's it's a tremendous amount. Of, and and the report does say that there will be some impacts on that. Uh, and they will try to mitigate those impacts as much as they possibly can as they go through. Um, so I, I'd say, again, they're, they're at least showing that they are aware that this is a very environmental sensitive area. Uh, I don't want to get into any of the, the noise levels or the anything of that nature. This is really not part of this commission unless we say noise is, is, impacts the bird population uh, nesting population over there. That that could be a part of it. But um, did anybody uh, take a take a chance to look at it and want to weigh in right now? I need more I mean, time to finish reading. Same here. It's a long it's a long document. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, I would just go to uh, the the environmental overview, which is on page well, it's five dash one. Uh, it just said the purpose of the overview is to identify the potential environmental issues and environmentally sensitive areas that may affect future airport project and to identify environmental issues that require additional analysis of permits required implementation. I got to imagine that there's going to be a tremendous amount of permitting and scrutiny because of the, again, proximity to the, uh, to the, the refuge, uh, uh, proximity to the water. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to make that assumption that, there's a lot of stuff that's got to go on with this before anything anything ever happens. And they said the environmental impact categories evaluated are land use and zoning, airport noise, social and economic environment, air quality, water quality, 
historic architectural, um, archaeological, cultural resources, biotic communities, threatened and endangered species, wetlands and watercourses, floodplains, coastal zone management program, prime and unique farmlands. Farmlands one, I think, is a little bit, a uh, little bit out there, but um, actually, but it, Greg, can I jump in? Yeah. You might want to make the argument for farmlands again. I'm just throwing this out there. Yeah. Um, people do go down there to fish, and they do go down there to collect the aquaculture. Muscles. Culture is farming. You're exactly right. And there are there are some farm areas over there. There are there is a place yeah. that they farm. And you, you there. could you could farm salt hay too. That kind of yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so so um, yeah, and, and and to me, a lot of this is uh, the coastal zone management program. Again, uh, that whole area is with. Uh, with water rise is is all subject over there so it's it's an interesting it's interesting I, I, there's so much to this i'm not exactly sure what they're asking us to do we can't do a blanket you know yes or up or up or down vote on this um so the only thing i could say is that right now we will study this we'll look at this and we will have questions down the road uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop to Joe again. Joe, any anything on your end on this? Because this really is a Bridgeport project. This is not really a Stratford project. This this master plan was was put together by Bridgeport, right? That's right? that's correct. And um, in the multiple public hearings that they've had over the course of of the year, um, I've brought up flooding concerns. I've brought brought up um, uh, environmental concerns such as wildlife. And the like, and the uh, the lens that they're trying to have the public view this through is safety, um, and uh, um, a lot of uh, apron work, a lot of uh, potential runway um, relocation, and not expansion per se. Um, they want to throw another one of the EMOS beds um, in at the end of 1129. Right. Um, for safety purposes, and um, um, they, the idea of of um, expansion and or commercial service has really been put on the far back burner with with everything that's going on COVID related. I mean, airports are struggling to even stay open, never mind expand. Um, so that's the way they're 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 viewing this. The the this um, ten year master plan is separate from anything that uh, that is uh, uh, involving any type of uh, commercial uh, endeavor there so um, but that being said um, while they have a chance to do this and uh, uh, let's do it uh, correctly and the, my biggest concern is is flooding I mean it's not going to get yeah. any better over over time and you know you're gonna you're gonna do all these improvements to the airport and then it's gonna be underwater at exactly. the time I mean you, every and time don't they don't address that at all no and you know every time there's a big rain I remember seeing um um, uh, news stories of the the entrance way to Tweed, you know, the doors that go open and close like this, and uh, half yeah. of it's up here with water. So, yeah, yeah. Um, is only slightly higher in, in elevation. So we're that's something that's I'm hoping it won't be just uh, uh, me. It'll be all of the boards and uh, commissions from Stratford. I mean, they should have taken a look at Stratford's see uh, conservation and development plan to see how it worked out with. But and our coastal resiliency plan. Yeah. Right. And that's been yeah, and, and the yeah, the coastal management plan that's 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 the Metrocog's working on, right? Too. That's that's all part of this. And and then we just have a study. I just saw the study where they showed uh, a cat two hurricane coming through, uh hitting 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 that area. That all everything goes underwater from all the way into Lordship and especially with the with the with again with, with uh, water rise. So yeah, that and, and they also I read the thing, it does in, in a bunch of spaces it does say that expansion is not part of this plan, but don't be surprised if it comes up down the road later. So it's, there is some words in there that I that I picked up as I was going through it. Uh, so again, they're asking for our, our opinion. Uh, Joe, what is, do they want this right away or is this something? Because it really was not that clear. Uh, probably by um, the end of the month. Right. OK. Uh, that's, yeah. All right. I think. Um, uh, they um, want to get this on the books because this is an FAA requirement from every airport that they have to do this 10-year master plan. 
So uh, the FAA, is, as you know, went in and they they um, redid 824, but when yep. they did, reduced it in, in width from 150 feet to 100. So now one of the um, one of the uh, um, ideas from the city of Bridgeport uh, point of view is to take some uh, money that has been bonded um, for the airport and repurpose it uh, to use for an upgrade to the other runway, the 1129 runway. Um, whether or not that ends up happening, I, I don't know, but uh, this would be um, to uh, uh, fix the runway as far as repaving. Uh, I figure while you're doing that, you might as well try to do some flooding miti or, uh, mitigation efforts because, you know, the sense of having a nice runway if it's underwater. So. I just want to uh, just read this one. This is again, on this 514 summary. Uh, it says projects recommended this airport master plan are anticipated to have some impacts on the environment with concerns generally focused on water quality, biotic communities, threatened and endangered species and wetlands. As there are in each resource specific sections before implementation of some of the proposed development projects, further environmental documentation will be required to document existing conditions, determine impacts on the resource, and if appropriate, identify mitigation measures to address adverse impacts. Once project details are available, if appropriate, under NEPA category exclusions or environmental assessments will be prepared in accordance with FAA guidance with corresponding SEPA documentation. Based on these past studies and the types of projects recommended in the master plan, it's anticipated that impacts can be successfully successfully mitigated, allowing implementation of the recommended plan. So, actually, yes, Angela. Uh, so I have a question. They they were talking in that little nice little summary you read. Again, uh, about documentation. Does Stratford have any documentation about what we have on on the endangered species and things of that? Down yeah, there? like endangered species, uh, believe, slow progress, things like that. I, I think uh, I'm not sure if we do, Kelly, but I know I know Fish and Wildlife has. Fish and Wildlife has a lot of that. Yep, you're right. Okay, could could we? Um, I haven't looked at their website in a while. Um, but do they have easy, like easy access where we could easily access a list of what we have, or would we have to request from Fish and Wildlife to get the information? There, there's um, a planning tool. Called, it's IPAC IPAC. Um, I forgot what that stands for, but US, US Fish and Wildlife has that. And you, I don't remember if you need an account, but it's free. I recall, okay. and and you can you can generate a list based on your project area um, of of all the listed species that they have federally. Okay, so IPAC. So, yeah, and that's what they used in the bath this master plan too. They did use that tool as well, but they just don't list out all the all the species. That, okay. that would make it look bad, I think. <laughs> so, so as Joe mentioned, that a lot of this has to a lot of this when I'm reading through it has to do with safety. He's right. So a lot of safety. Some trees, tree removals, some uh, some some um, some vegetation removal. Um, if this ma this master plan, if if again, I'm I'm not quite sure. Is this master plan? It's an update. It gets approved, but doesn't necessarily mean anything goes forward. It's just like it's just a master plan to show the future of what's going to be happening there. So there's no money. There's no nothing that the, the master plan gets put in place. They immediately uh, start work on things, or or do they? I don't know what that what entails there. You are correct. It's just a uh, plan. Now, just a plan. Um, just like just like a thousand. FAA, of well, this one's a little more timely because the FAA is kind of uh, getting it to the end of their rope as far as the condition of runway eleven two nine, which is the slightly longer runway and the preferred runway for noise abatement um, uh, for for the area so um this is that probably the first step and then ideally if the repurposing of the uh, state bond funds are, are allowed uh, then that would be used to uh, do this runway over again and i don't know if if look I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you anything that it doesn't is not known in public but there was an incident at the airport last year where somebody drove out onto the runway right. and basically damaged the existing EMOS bed um, and 
the FAA knows about it. So they want yep. the town or excuse me, the city to fix it. And uh, it's still functional, but it's probably only at three quarters of its of its um, uh, capability. So that's probably going to have to get wrapped into whatever they do. And they would like to try to do another one um, at the end of the uh, uh, runway 1129 closest to Main Street. Show, uh, does this also have, does this, this uh, the ratification, this master plan, does this also have any uh, impact on uh, selection of a regional airport? Well, that's... Uh, that's been put on the back burner as well. Um, uh, I can't speak out of turn, so just <laughs> let me let me up the hook on this one. <laughs> All right, I will let you off the hook, Joseph. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, as Joe mentioned, it sounds like they want something from us. I it's a master plan. There may be some things that bond money can uh, actuate in this pretty quickly, but but master plans are master plans. They're just a, a document that shows what can possibly happen in the future. Uh, Kelly, when you went through it, did you did you see anything that that shot at you? Um, just a few minor comments. Uh, climate change was huge to me. That that really wasn't addressed in any way. I don't nope. even know if it was mentioned. Um, and they even talk about having to close down runways because of flooding. So they know it's a thing. So I was kind of shocked at that. Um, they, a lot of the improvement projects are going to require some stormwater treatment. And I don't know the mechanism by which they will do that. They can't do any underground storage. They have to do above ground storage, which there's obviously limited space for. Uh, what else? Um, they mentioned that there's no environmental justice communities uh, in that area, but they kind of seem to craft it in such a way that they forgot that um, towards the end of, I forget, the, I think it's runway 11. I get all the runways confused. Um, there's an environmental justice community right in the Frash Pond community, um, almost adjacent to the, the airport, and they just kind of um, ignored that, I thought. Um, and by moving that, by trying to put most of the, of the traffic on that specific runway, would all the noise be transferred to that environmental justice community? Uh, so I, that was another one of my concerns. Uh, and then just general, obviously, wetland filling concerns and invasive spe uh, endangered species. Um, I mean, at this point, the airport has obviously filled. I mean, it's all fill. It's all, all built on a wetland. So any additional fill at this point is like, all right, just for, you've already filled in X number of acres of wetland. How, how many more inches do we keep giving you over time for our safety improvements? So the general comments that I think any of you that would read it would, would also agree with. So again, <laughs> I don't think we, I don't think we are being asked to, vote this up or down. Uh, I think we, we can probably stay. Uh, there are things in the in the master plan that can uh, that are concern to the Conservation Commission and we could say IE, you know, uh, the endangered species, the communities, noise levels, uh, water rise, um, and they should be addressed, you know, uh, uh, before they become be, become an issue uh, in any construction. But I'm not sure if that's what is being asked of us. Any 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 insights, anybody? I just think we should read it and, and send you the comments and our mm -hmm. comments. I'm gonna. I'm trying. In any case, ahead, you need more detail on everything. I mean, um, how, how do you comment on general terms like that? You can't. Well, it, they've got all a lot of back. I mean, if you go through this document, there's a lot of background information on this. There's there's lots and lots of stuff, which, uh, again, uh, you got to wade through quite a bit of it. Um, so we can do that again and wade through it again and come up with some some uh, ideas on it. But I'm going to read the message again. I think you all all got this, but I just want to read the message again uh, that Eileen sent out to us. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Uh, okay. 
So this is from, uh, again, please read the message from Chief of Staff Mike Downs regarding the Scorch Memorial Airport Master Planning Review. This will be discussed at the conservation meeting. Thanks in advance. And basically it says, Dear Board and Commission Chairs of Planning, Zoning, Conservation, Economic Development, Waterfront, Parks and Recreation, Inland Wetlands and Watercourse. As you were, the Scorch Memorial Master Plan process is entering its final stages. The draft plan document Airport layer are now available for you. Your board commission is a critical component with stakeholder interest in development of this project. We would ask that your board of commission please place this item on the agenda for the month of October to review by your membership with an eye toward elements of the plan under purview of your board of commission. We're seeking input of your boards of commission on this master plan. Input received on this plan through October 30th. We'd like to be certain to include the input of membership in the overall input of the town of Stratford, its membership and technical advisory committee for this plan. To that end, after your board of commission has reviewed this item, please forward the relative comments to my attention to Mike Downs. So I just wanted to re reread that to everybody, uh, what that was, uh, what he's asking for. So I'm going to ask everybody to, to go through the plan. Again, you cannot have to go through the 290 pages of it. Uh, I have read, like I said, I've read this, and basically what Kelly just said is exactly what I said. Uh, I, there's some things there like the um, environmental area, the, the sensitivity area. I don't know what those are, but um, but basically that is our comments. That this is a, a vital a vital uh, resource for the for the area. It's vital for the health of Long Island Sound. It's vital for the health of of uh, the the birds and animals that live there. Uh, it's a it's a you know hey Joe. It's potentially there's a, it's a it's a Horseshoe crab uh, area that that right now, as you mentioned, they're helping us with uh, with COVID research. Uh, so these are it's a it's a so that would be our concern. I mean, that's what I would say. The conservation commission's concern is this is this is a is too valuable an area to mess around with. You know, now I'm not saying that we say that that you can't do anything with the airport because I don't, I don't believe that we can say. We would like to see the airport go back to, uh, you know, mm. uh, just prop jobs there. But I think we we can say that as conservation commission, this is our concerns, and and leave and leave it at that. So would would everybody be feel? Uh, I would like everybody to go back, look at this document, take a look at it, send the information that <coughs> that uh, that it concerns you to Kelly. Kelly, you and I before the end of the month. Why don't we get together, we'll put together a statement, you know, we'll send it back to the commission to take a look at, uh, and then we'll just send it off to the to a mic. Does that sound fair to everybody? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So again, what's that? We impose a ter an internal deadline, perhaps to have everyone's comments to you or I by, um, I don't know, the 23rd, or let me look at a calendar. Just so that we have time, you and I to prepare a, a document by the 23rd or 26th. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's say let's say that uh, let me get calendar going. The 13th already, so this month is flying by just like the rest of this uh, year. Let's say let's say by to get it to us by the 23rd, Friday the 23rd. That gives right. us a few days to put together get it back to you to take a look at for anything the additions are, are and then we can get it out for the 30th that's not fair yep mm -hmm. okay Ooh. all righty uh new business anything else under new business i have i have an item i'd like to bring up i'm gonna mute you, bill please, okay go ahead mind if I ask them their opinion as the representative, me being the representative of the Conservation Commission to the Wetlands Commission about the, um, what is it, 250 Whippoorwill Lane? We, we, we've been at, we had a, have a situation where we had a violation of removal of trees on a particular piece of property and we gave the owner or slash developer of this property um, 
restore the trees that he illegally removed uh, prior to getting any sort of wetland permit. Um, he ignored our request. Um, actually, uh, it was more than a request. Um, <clears throat> and uh, after repeated times of asking him to do that, uh, we, as the wetland commission, decided to revoke his wetland permit. To make a long story short, it turns out that we got an opinion from the town attorney that if we cannot revoke a wetland permit just because, <clears throat> because a person is non-compliant with a requirement from the commission for restoration and mitigation. <clears throat> so we were asked by one of his representatives to take a look at the property because it's been, I don't know, how long has it been, Kelly? Two years now? Um, I think it might even be longer. Well, the violation was, was from 2016, and I think it was finally resolved end of 2017, early 2018. Yeah, he's ignored us for four plus years. And what has happened is that some of the vegetation has just moved in by itself, naturally. Uh, we've got a lot of volunteer species that have moved in. I was just wondering, we're, we're going to be asked at the next commission, which is uh, going to be when, following Wednesday, um, to make an opinion on whether this is adequate in terms of uh, his requirement to do restoration work. And I would just like to get the general consensus or opinion of, of this commission that and I'm going to be blunt, even though this guy thumbed his nose at the Wetland Commission and, and allowed Mother Nature to reestablish species, which really weren't, would not be the species that we would require him to restore, uh, to be sufficient. Are there any comments or any thoughts on that? I have one. I do too. Um, Go for it. Bill, if there's a, a dollar value per tree that was illegally removed, I would be asking legal counsel if you can lien the property for that dollar value. Totally messes up their credit rating and everything else when there's liens slammed on the property. I mean, there should be a financial compensation to the town for that illegal removal. In lieu, if he doesn't want to plant the trees, then he should be paying the town what those trees would cost to be replaced. Um, and, and whether it's through a direct fine or leaning his property or, or something of that nature, that would be, to me, the way to address it. Okay, thank you. Any other mm -hmm. comments? Um, I was gonna basically say what Karen said. Um, again, cost of replanting, but also too, if there are any invasive species, and again, remediation, like again, tree of heaven or something like that, where you have to go in and dig everything out, Again, add that to the lien if you have to, again, go in and remediate the property. Okay. Um, Thank you. I'll just, I'll just take the liberty to say I've, I've dealt with this in somewhat of a situation where I go in and I'm doing an appraisal. Uh, for, well, background, I did a report for a woman who her neighbor had approached onto her wetlands property, said she talked to wetlands and that she had the okay and uh, encroached on the property so it's a little bit different but you know to you to have you know even if kelly would write it or the town tree warden or someone needs to you know actually assess the value of the trees and uh you know figure out what that that nomination is and if the um, well regardless of who the consultant is um you know but that that should be taken into consideration and uh you know documented to the extent where you do get a total where you are able to put a lien and then evaluate what species have came up and see if it's even appropriate that that's that's what's populated very good thank you yeah we yeah, i mean what he's asking for is essentially a get out of jail card and monopoly 
and where he doesn't want to pay anything, but he does want his permit. So we have to make that evaluation. I, I you probably can read through the lines where I'm coming from, but <laughs> all right, thank you. I wanted to hear from you. Okay. Sounds good. That was good. That was good input. Very good input. Oh good. All right. All right. Anybody any other new business? All right. Can I get a motion to a oh Joseph, value customer. Okay. Uh don't mean to hold everyone up, but uh when I served on the uh Roseville Forest uh, commission for a couple of years as a representative from the conservation commission one of the things that we got accomplished was we um, got a portable um, toilet bathroom whatever uh, put up there and the, the uh, we had given information to the town council when they were getting these grants uh, federal grants and uh, they put it through and uh, the town was awarded um, money to purchase that portable toilet. Um, it was self-contained. It, it had a uh, facility for both uh, male and female. And it, uh, I think it had a fence around it. And um, at one point, I think they took it out to use for a parade or some other town event. And I don't know if it didn't get back there uh, after that event or they put it back and then they use it at another event. And then, I don't know, uh, did it ever get back there permanently? No, or there's no, no, no there. So as far as I know, there, there's no public facilities there now uh, uh, that I've seen. Now, I also have another question here. Uh, pertaining to that now if they applied for the uh, grant got the grant for the town got the grant for it was purchased and if uh i guess it was spelled out what it was for was for the forest because the uh i guess the uh, pit toilets there weren't too uh, favorable for a lot of people who would go up there and if the town used it for something else other than what they got the money from the federal government, I don't know if there's something wrong here. But anyway. Well, I think could... uh, we can take a look into that. I, I, there is also, I believe, there there was just some discussion with the dog park being up there now uh, that they'd have to come up with something for for people, not just the dogs, but the people there too. Uh, and I thought I saw something about funding, coming, looking for funding to fix up some of the buildings that are up there. Am I wrong with that, Kelly? I thought I heard that, but I could be wrong. I have, I, have, I regularly attend Roosevelt Forest um, Commission and there has been no talk of that that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, but do you have a timeline on the the portable facilities that you're talking about? When when were they last at the forest? So I can kind of look into that. Uh, Bill, I think you were also coming to some of those meetings. Yeah, it, it was in the early, you know, 2003, 4, 5, something in there. Okay. It's a trailer, Kelly. I mean, I it, it was parked at Public Works Yard for the longest time. Okay. All right. Well, we can take a look at that. Yeah. More people, again, and this, the reason that's, the reason that, Joe, to bring it up is, is good because we've been seeing across the board on uh, every, every resource, uh, that we have, the town residents are getting out and using these resources more than they ever have before. So we're also a forest, the beaches, um, people are going out, you know, because they want to get outside and that's, they feel safe out there. So, um, so yeah, to, but it does make some sense to see if there's a way for people to get some relief there without using a tree or a, a rock. Thank you. It goes back to right from the beginning the reason why they couldn't keep the trailer there was because there Damn was it. so much vandalism. exactly exactly it's exactly right Bill. Exactly. that story <laughs> i think there'd be i think there'd be a little bit more of a again a little bit more people would, would want to see something there again just for the amount of use that the park's getting and the um the dog park being there because if people are using that dog park 
you know, they're sitting there for, you know, half an hour, whatever, 45 minutes, you know, I would think they'd be looking for a facility someplace. So makes some sense. All right. Thanks, Joseph. All right. Anything else to come across this wonderful rogues gallery I look at here every once a month? All right. Well, again, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second. All in favor. Second. Aye. Bye. All right, guys. All right. Have a have a safe rest of your month. Let's uh, be safe, and we'll see you next month. Yep. And then twenty third, read. You got homework now. Look at your stuff. Get stuff to Kelly and I, and and we'll work on getting something to uh, to to the uh, town uh, right away. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks.